And welcome back, rugby fans, to Rugby 411. As always, I'm your host. My name is Joshua Shibata. And as always, with the purpose of this YouTube channel is to inform newer rugby fans here in America of competitions that are going on showcasing rugby teams in America, uh, both local competitions and international competitions. And right now, there is a new international competition that's coming up later this weekend called the Challenge Cup of the Americas. This is the inaugural edition. It's a, it's a pretty exciting concept uh, that's going to focus on two teams. There's four teams that are involved in this, uh, in this kind of mini tournament that's uh, going to have two teams that represent the Northern Americas and two teams that represent the Southern Americas. So it is a purely Americas international competition, which is great because it, uh, I'll go a little bit more into details about the benefits of a competition like this, but it really will help strengthen a lot of our domestic players here in America, as well as players up in North America, Northern America, which is Canada, and then the players in the Southern America area that normally don't get as much international exposure or competition as they should compared to the rest of the world. So this is a unique experience. This is a great concept, one that I'm highly supportive of and I hope will grow. And again, we'll go more into that uh, because it will only benefit not only us in America, but in the entire uh, Northern and Southern American continent. And again, compared to the rest of the world, we're still a little bit behind so this is, uh, again, this will help grow the game, help grow experience for players, and it's, it's great for everybody. So, again, this is the first inaugural edition of the Challenge Cup of the Americas. It's going to take place over two weekends, over two Saturdays, Saturday, June 11th, and Saturday, June 18th. Two games per day. Uh, both of them are going to start at 12 p.m. and then 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and it will be streamed live on Infinity Park's YouTube channel. Infinity Park is the location of where these games are being played, which is located in Glendale, Colorado. Infinity Park is the very first rugby-centric stadium that or park that has been built in America to showcase rugby, purely built for rugby games. It used to be the home to the Glendale or Colorado Raptors, uh, one of the very first teams in Major League Rugby, unfortunately, uh, they became defunct a couple years ago, but Infinity Park is still open and it is actually now home to the American Raptors, which is one of the teams that will be involved in this competition. So the four teams that are involved in the competition, the American Raptors, as I mentioned before, which will represent America. Uh, located in Glendale, Colorado. Then you have our northern from Canada, the University of British Columbia Old Boys Ravens Club, which is located in Vancouver. And then the South American contingent, the Jaguars or Jaguars 15, which represents Argentina. And then the Penrill Rugby Club, which represents Uruguay. So a little bit of background of all four of these teams. First of all, the American Raptors is a very, very interesting team. Originally, they were called the Crossovers, the Exos. Uh, what the point of this team is, is a group that is focused on athletes who did not start playing rugby. These are all athletes that excelled in other sports, most of them from football, but you have wrestlers, you have track stars, uh, all throughout their high school, college, you know, and even going back to when they were little that were then centered and focused on to try rugby and see if they can make that transition. That's why they used to be called the crossovers, exos, because they're trying to get athletes to cross over to rugby to show that there's a lot of similarities, of, a lot of the similar skill sets involved in playing these other sports, specifically, especially like football and wrestling. I mean, if you've ever seen tackles and rucks, rucks being formed requires a lot of core strength. That's wrestling right there. So really, it's the goal of the American Raptors is to focus on these athletes in other sports and see if they want to and if they can excel in rugby. And it's, in my opinion, it's been a huge success. There's been a lot of players that have transitioned and have now made themselves known not only in the 15s game, but even in the 7s. More specifically, there's a, a gentleman by the name of David Still. Who's, who just made the Rugby American Sevens team. 
Uh, he's amazing. For a guy who literally just started playing rugby last year, he's already made the sevens national team. Uh, he's done very, very well. Uh, I believe he played in the Olympics in Japan. So he's already an Olympian as well. Started out in football and is now a a member of the American Sevens. He also played for the Austin Gill Gronies as well. Other players that are on the American Raptors that made uh, appearances in Major League Rugby teams include uh, Maki Muti, who was a, a member of the LA Guiltinis last year. Max Dacey, who played for both the Glendale Raptors and Rugby New York. Uh, Simon Smith, who plays for Rugby New York. Watson Filikitanga, who played for LA Guillotinis last year. And then Brady Daniel, who just debuted a couple of weeks ago for Old Glory DC. So again, a lot of talented players who have the, the goal of American Raptors is to train these athletes in the, the art and the skills of rugby and see if they can apply the skills that they use in their other sports to rugby. Again, it's, it's a great, great idea and concept. Other players who have done this before the American Raptors, you look no further than Perry Baker, who is a huge star on the American Sevens team. He started in football. He played arena football, uh, football throughout college, and then made the transition to rugby. He's one of the greatest players for the American Sevens team. He has the most tries scored by any American Sevens player. So that transition, I feel, could be a huge lifeline and bloodline for rugby in America when we're, we're still far behind in training kids uh, to start playing rugby at a young age. Let's get the players who are already stars in other sports that maybe can't make that next step into the pros. Maybe they can do it in rugby. Again, um, Perry Baker couldn't quite make it in the professional football. He's a huge star now in the sevens. He is a, a former Olympian. With the, um, uh, with the USA 7s team. So it's amazing. So that's the American Raptors team that's representing America. The University of British Columbia Old Boys Ravens Club is one of the oldest rugby clubs in uh, Canada, formed in 1974, one of the most successful clubs as well. They are a seven-time uh, champion of the Roosevelt Cup, which is a uh, championship that is uh, competed over with all the clubs in British Columbia. They are the uh, reigning uh, Canadian club champions that they won back in 2018. Unfortunately, because of COVID, they haven't been able to defend that title, but they are the reigning Canadian club champions. And they have the distinction of being one of the few clubs in Canada that actually has a win over a major league rugby team. They defeated the Houston Sabercats back in 2018. Uh, they were supposed to have a couple of uh, preseason games against the Toronto Arrows and the Seattle Seawolves. Unfortunately, COVID shut that down earlier this year. But uh, the University of British Columbia Old Boys Ravens Club is a very respected club and they are a very good representative of Canada. They will be taking part in this competition. The Jaguars of uh, the Jaguar 15s is the second level, almost like a feeder club to the national Argentinian team, the Pumas, um, that play on the national level. Jaguars 15 are a very well-respected club. Again, it's a feeder system, so the players that are not quite yet at the level to be on the national team start with the Jaguars 15. They are one of two teams that are representing South America, and they're actually both teams that represent the Superliga Americana de Rugby, a league which is also known as SLAR, which is basically the equivalent of Major League Rugby, but in South America. So... South America has their own professional rugby league. Again, it's the Superliga Americana de Rugby, or SLAR for short. It uh, was just formed in uh, 2020. Six teams have taken part in this competition. Uh, unfortunately, because of 2021 with COVID, they weren't able to have a champion then. But in 2020, the Jaguars were the champions. And then this season's champions were the Panaro Rugby Club from Uruguay. So... Um, both of these teams, very, very strong teams. Again, you have the former uh, SLAR champions, and then you have the current SLR champions. Other teams that are part of SLAR, uh, Cavateros Pro, which represents uh, Medellin, Colombia. Then you have the Cobras, the Brazil 15s group, which represents Brazil. Olympia Lions from Paraguay. And then the Selkem, uh, which represents Santiago, Chile. And again, it, it it's, it's great to see... Uh, uh, or 
organization like SLAR form in South America because just like MLR in North America, SLAR really allows the players in South America to have a consistent competition and grow their players, just like MLR. Without these kind of pro leagues, it's very, very hard for players um, from these developing countries who are still a little bit far behind. I mean, uh, the closest ranked team to us in America would be the Uruguayan team, who are ranked number 19 right behind us in USA. Uh, but if you don't have these kind of domestic competitions, it's very hard, just like in America, for rugby players to develop their skills. And again, because America, North and South, have a little opportunity to have test matches. We've been getting a lot more test matches now recently because of the growth of the game, but especially because of travel uh, parameters, uh, it's hard for us to travel over to Europe, vice versa, it's hard for European teams to travel over to us, hard for Southern Hemisphere teams like South, America, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia. I mean, if you ever travel to Australia, that's a long trip. So it's very hard for those teams to come over here as well. So it's good for us to have an international competition like this, where you can get teams from South America, from Canada, from America to compete against each other. And you're literally, you're almost taking kind of the best of the best. I mean, like I said, you have two former SLAR champions. You don't have an MLR champion, but that could change. You have a, a crossover team, which is great because it helps develop the players with the American Raptors, and then you have a, a very respected team in Canada. All of them, just the players that are playing in this game, they're going to learn some valuable, valuable skills and have some great competition. This, I'm hoping, what's great about this concept is I'm hoping it can grow. And like I said, it's great that we have representatives of SLAR in this competition. Hopefully, as this competition grows, we can maybe throw in an MLR team Maybe the MLR champions. I mean, this competition could be very similar to what's going on in Europe. There's a, uh, I highly recommend you look this up. It's the European Rugby Champions Cup. I've watched last year's rendition of it. It's an amazing competition that involves three of the top European uh, leagues, rugby leagues. You have the Premiership, which represents England. You have the Top 14, which represents France. And then you have used to be known as the Pro 14, but now it's called the United Rugby Champions. Um, that represents five different nations. You have Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Italy, and then they just added in South Africa. So you have, you have seven countries that are competing in this competition. And what they do is they take the best teams in each of these leagues. So you have like the top, I believe it's like the top six in the Premiership, the top six in the URC, and the top six in the top 14. And they all compete against each other in this tournament to crown the best of the best. It's, it's an amazing concept. And it's something that it makes all these countries that are competing with each other better. Because you're not just facing competition within your own country. You're facing the best of the competition in other countries. So again, because we can't really get involved with other countries, unfortunately, because of travel... It's great that we're focusing on our own Americas. And hopefully, again, maybe we can get the top SLR team to go against the top MLR team, you know? And then again, maybe throw in the Raptors and throw in a few clubs from Canada. It, it, it wouldn't hurt to have that. So, again, this is a great competition. I'm hoping it grows. This is going to be the first iteration, and it's going to start this weekend. Again, Saturday, June 11th. Two games being played. I believe the uh, first game is going to be the, Ra the American Raptors taking on the Jaguars. And then the second game is going to be the Old Boy Ravens Club taking on Penarol. And that's going to be at 12 p.m. And then the second game is at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then June 18th, we're doing the second set of games where we have the Ravens taking on the Jaguars at 12 p.m. And then the Raptors taking on the Penarol rugby team at 2.30 p.m. Um, again, don't know exactly if they're fighting over any kind of... Um, I'm sure they're fighting over some trophy, but the fact that they can't necessarily play everybody, I'm sure there's some sort of point system that's going to come up. But again, something that's fun to watch. If, you, if you're interested in teams in the SLAR, they do have their own website, SLAR. 
Um, and, but if you, you know, kind of want to watch them with this, this gives you a chance to watch the Jaguars 15 and the Penrose rugby team compete against uh, two teams that represent Northern America. So again, a great, great concept. I hope it grows. And uh, the only thing that this does is it helps grow the game here in America and in South America as well. Plus, there's a little bit of a, um, a storyline in this because Penel Rugby represents Uruguay. And the Uruguayan national team just beat the USA national team to qualify for the Rugby World Cup. So there's a little bit of maybe some bad blood right there. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch these, two, these four games. So again, highly recommend it. Check it out. Infinity Park YouTube channel. Saturday, June 11th, Saturday, June 18th, the Challenge Cup of the Americas. So again, thank you very much for checking out my video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the pitch.